Alabama, Mr. Rogers. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for being here. We Sir. appreciate your service to our country. Um, we have a lot of threats that originate overseas uh, at last point of departure airports. And uh, I'm real curious to know what steps, if, if any, y'all have been taking to work with our international partners to uh, help them deal with the uh, deficiencies that the AT X-ray machines have when it comes to screening passengers? Yes, sir. We have a number of people deployed overseas that are uh, industry representatives or, <clears throat> or TSA representatives in countries, um, roughly 100 people overall, uh, and they have direct interaction with both the carriers, the airports, and the nations uh, involved in the last point of departure airports. As we've worked to raise the global bar in aviation security, those steps that we put in place in July and the additional measures that came into force in October, uh, all of those inspectors and those uh, TSA representatives are visiting all of every single one of the last point of departure airports just to see how they're doing with implementing those measures and importantly to see where we can help them out. Okay. Do they seem receptive to that help? They do. Yes, sir. Great. Uh, according to the refresh plan, uh, TSA plan to procure two CT machines a year until you found the technology worked. Uh, you talked with the chairman about you now that you feel comfortable for it, comfortable with it, you'd like to have at least 300. What's down the road? What's the total number you think you'd be able to need for across the the, the transportation world spectrum? Yes, sir. Initial planning would would be uh, very very simple, and that is a uh, one for one replacement of the. Uh, advanced technology or the AT machines with the CAT technology. That's roughly 2,400 machines overall. Um, we, we will find as we deploy the CAT machines that, that a one-for-one -one replacement may not be necessary. Um, and, and additionally, uh, a number of airports around the country are uh, doing a lot of investment in their airport infrastructure, uh, and, the, and the way they invest may require more 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 lanes for us or fewer. And so it's a, it's a very um, uh, exact process to go through airport by airport and see where we can deploy the CT technology. Uh, finally, there are some restrictions because the CT machines weigh more and they're a little bit bigger. Um, and so in some airports, without those infrastructure investments, they may not be able to handle a CT machine. Well, we understand that you're constrained by the, the President's budget and your advocacy, um, but the good news is the President proposes and we decide. So we're going to do our best, as the chairman said, to try to help you get sure. what you need. I'm curious, if you get to 300, what percentage of your capacity will that accommodate? That's, um, if we get 300, um, mm -hmm. I don't have the exact, it basically would be 300 over, over roughly 2,400. So whatever that math uh, turns out to be. Um, what's also important is to, is to have some level of predictability in the future funding stream. Uh, that's important for the manufacturers to, to understand that too. Um, and you know, as we go through the testing process that we're in right now, we have uh, a number of manufacturers' machines that we are testing. Uh, we don't know at this point how many manufacturers of the set that we're testing are actually going to succeed in that test and be listed on, on our product list. So that will also determine how much capacity we can put out there. Basically, it's, the, it's going to be the capacity of the number of manufacturers. Okay. okay. Um, I want to shift over. Uh, yeah, I appreciate the fact that you've been uh, full-throated in your support of the uh, legislation we passed last week dealing with uh, establishing a working group for canine production and, and training. Uh, and I hope that it's your expectation to uh, give the same uh, commitment to carrying out the report and recommendations that they're going to yield as to how we implement those that production and training. Yes, sir, absolutely. In, in fact, uh, I'd like to get a start on the requirements in that legislation before the legislation is even passed. I agree with it so much that I think that we shouldn't waste any time. We should just get about the business and, and get it done. Great. I know you and I have talked about the fact that TSA is struggling uh, with American vendors to get green dogs or the dogs that have the capability but haven't been trained mm -hmm. yet. Uh, what is the status of uh, or is there any activity going on with uh, t within TSA to kind of modify their procurement processes to reflect more what, what DOD does. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and we're constantly looking at that because our procurement processes, as many of the other members have noted, they're, they're lengthy. And so you know, my approach is to look at it and say, how can, how can we streamline, even within the existing requirements that we have, how can we streamline that process to get to an end solution faster? My central effort um, in my strategy is going to be to accelerate action because as I look across TSA, many things just take a lot longer than I think they should take, no matter what it is. It takes longer than I think what it should take. Uh, and so, you know, a key focus and, and certainly a focus on getting technology deployed out to our frontline workforce, uh, which would include canines, because I, you know, I, I firmly believe that we need to do everything we can to get the right tools in the hands of the men and women we have out there. 
Great. Uh, my time has, has expired. I, I do have a couple of additional questions that I'll submit for the record. I'd ask you to reply to those. With that, I yield back. Sure. 